fourth Sunday in Advent, our 40th online service. It's really good to have you joining with us again wherever you are. And I must admit a few weeks ago when I realised today would be the 40th service, online service, um, I got quite excited because when I read scripture, when I look at some of the patterns in scripture, then I see that the number 40 has great significance within scripture 40 seems to denote a period of time a period of time after which something significant happens we have 40 years in the desert those 40 years wandering for the israelites we have the 40 days that jesus was in the wilderness um, being tempted for in the Old Testament, 40 days when the prophet lied or laid on one side to signify the years of, in a sense, rebellion of the Israelite people. Jesus, after his resurrection, spent 40 days with his disciples, what teaching them, showing them that he was alive before he was taken up to heaven. The number 40, we can go right through. Um, scripture and see the number 40 appearing time and time and time again when afterwards that period of time something significant happens and so i'm really excited knowing that after this 40 um, on 40th online service 40 times we've shared together in this way is god going to do something significant well perhaps it is significant that our next service will be our carol service and then our 41st, if you like, actually online service um, will be Christmas Day. Something significant happens after 40, yeah, and we recognise the coming of the Messiah. And so we celebrate on this fourth Sunday in Advent as we continue to wait for the coming Messiah. Wait for God to do something significant. He has done it through this period of time. He's going to keep on doing it because we have a great God. We have an amazing God who wants to speak to us, who wants to bless us, who wants to do amazing things for us and in us and through us. So let's get excited. It's Christmas, it's nearly Christmas, and uh, we can be excited because of what, who God is, because of his promise, and because these periods of times are always significant when we trust him and when we allow him to do his work. And so we start as we, in a sense, continue in worship and we sing the first Noah. Born is the King of Israel. Something significant? You don't get much more significant than that. Let's sing together, shall we?
sharing that song with us this morning for the small group and now let's pray together shall we loving father god we are amazed at your goodness to us constantly you surprise us and we want to just praise you and thank you today we thank you that as we look forward to celebrating the coming of jesus we pray that your spirit your blessing and your joy and your peace will rest on each one of us. We pray that in the excitement, in the preparations, we will not miss anything of what you want to do in us and for us. Lord Jesus, we thank you for coming. We want to praise your name. Help us to continue to do that today in all that we share together. In your name we pray. Amen. Heather's going to bring the announcements for us uh, just now. Thank you, Heather. Every week we are blessed to have musical and spoken contributions from Core Folk. And we hope that as you take part yourself or you watch others, you have a sense that we are together in worship. 
We're grateful to everybody who contributes on screen and off. It's a huge task for many people to keep this going every week. From the first thoughts that Lynn and Chris have to posting the meeting on social media and everything in between. This has been especially so at Christmas. Four Advent services, a carol service, which is later today at 4pm, a service for Christmas Day and a meeting for the Sunday before New Year. One of the things you probably don't realise is that some people have the spiritual gift of reminding, sending out gentle messages to remind us to get our contributions in on time. And these past few weeks, some of our team have been doing all of this work through difficult times of their own, and we are very grateful to you for your faithful ministry. You are going to have a little bit of a break soon. Our territorial leaders are leading worship for everyone on Sunday the 3rd of January. So we will join with CORE across the territory for Commitment Sunday that day. Our Christmas present appeal is coming to an end and many of the gifts and toys are on their way to the recipients. So thank you to our staff and volunteer team who have worked so hard on that. And to you for your generous contributions. If you want to know more about how it's all gone this year, check out our Facebook page. And if you would like to contribute to our community work, which continues all year round, then just get in touch and we'll let you know how to do that. Now, I know that quite a few of you have not sent as many Christmas cards as you would do usually. So we've got a few here that folks have sent to us on the notice board. So before I hand over to Kevin and KidZone, I'll leave you with some of the lovely pictures and messages that are here. A children's story that has something for all of us to learn from. Also, as a geography teacher, I could not resist adding some geography. So starting with that geography, here's a question for the adults. What has a volcano exploding on the other side of the earth got to do with the writing of the carol Silent Night? The answer, perhaps surprisingly, is quite a lot. So here's the story. In the early 1800s, there lived in the snowy country of Austria a poor priest called Father Joseph. In 1816, Father Joseph's uh, people in his church were not doing very well. For many years they'd suffered with wars in their country. And also, in 1815, they'd been really, really cold. A year that historians would call the year with no summer. The eruption of a huge volcano in Indonesia called Mount Tambora in 1815 had affected the weather throughout Europe. Ash from the volcano hanging in the sky caused continuous storms, even snow, in the middle of summer. The villagers' crops failed and there was widespread famine. This certainly was a year without a summer. So in the winter time Father Joseph wanted to do something to help his people because they were poor, they were hungry and scared. One day, when walking out on a beautiful winter's evening, Father Joseph noticed it was very quiet. The dark sky was full with stars, the moon hanging like a big jewel, and snow. Snow was everywhere. As Father Joseph trudged along, these words came into his mind. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. So he wrote the words to give his vill villagers hope that there was still a God who cared for them. The following year, Father Joseph was transferred to the parish of St Nicholas in the town of Obendorf, just south of Salzburg. There he asked his friend, Franz, to write the music for the six verses that he'd already written. Franz was a local school teacher and organist in the church. Father Joseph wanted a guitar tune, but Franz wasn't sure. He wasn't sure that he could write such a tune, but sadly the organ was broken. 
The church mice, it was believed, had nibbled at the organ, and so a guitar tune it was to be. So if it hadn't been for those hungry mice, we might never have heard Silent Night. Franz worked all day and gave Father Joseph an early gift for Christmas. The best Christmas present. A piece of music that fitted the poem perfectly. As perfectly as a slipper on a foot or a warm glove on a hand. The words and music became a song and it was performed that evening on Christmas Eve in 1818, over 200 years ago. The two friends singing Silent Night together for the first time in front of Father Joseph's own congregation with Father Joseph playing his guitar. The song was well received by the people in the church, most of whom worked as boat builders and sailors and traders in the salt trade on the river Saltsack, which flowed through the beautiful city of Salzburg. The melody and harmony of Silent Night that France wrote is actually based on an Italian musical style called the Sicilian. It copies the sound of water and rolling waves Two large rhythmic beats split into three parts each. The music reflected the daily sounds of the Salzbach River that the congregation in the church would be used to. Now if you know the film The Sound of Music you will know that Austria loves family singing groups. It was two such travelling families of folk singers who included the tune in their shows. The song then became popular across Europe and also in the United States of America. German missionaries spread the song from Tibet to Alaska and all around the world and translated it into over 200 local languages. So the people in the church on that Christmas Eve, still suffering from the hunger and poverty brought by nature, just did not realise that their song would one day be sung all around the world at Christmas. The key word in the song is silent. Can you imagine silence? The song is hoping for silence so that the little baby Jesus will sleep and not get woken up. I wonder how the carol makes you feel. Why do you think so many people love this carol? Why do we even sing carols at Christmas? Christmas is a time for people to come together, to celebrate and have fun. When we sing together, it reminds us of what we have in common and fills us up with a warm, happy feeling. It's good to sing together, even a carol that is over 202 years old, even on Zoom, when we can't be as close to those we love. It's also good to think of the baby Jesus, sleeping in the crib in that stable. Let's thank God for Christmas songs and carols that fill us with joy. Let's ask him to help us to sing together and care for each other as we celebrate the happiness that Christmas brings. Thank you, Kevin, for sharing with us and for the children today. And as we continue to worship together, we're going to sing Away in a Manger, um, a great carol um, 
that we've learned when we were very young, but a carol that still says much to us today. And after that, the songsters are going to share with us a song, Triumph of the Skies. Thank you.
message and for sharing with us and all your ministry to us um, over the past months. Our Bible reading this morning is taken from John chapter 16. John chapter 16, starting to read at verse 27. The Father tenderly loves you because you love me and believe that I've come from God. I came to you sent from the Father's presence and I entered into the created world and now I will leave this world and return to the Father's side. His disciples said, at last you're speaking to us clearly and not using veiled speech and metaphors. Now we understand that you know everything there is to know and we don't need to question you further. And everything you've taught us convinces us that you have come directly from God. Jesus replied, now you finally believe in me and the time has come when you will all be scattered and each one of you will go your own way, leaving me all alone. Yet I am never alone, for the Father is always with me and everything I've taught you is so that the peace which is in me will be in you and will give you great confidence as you rest in me. For in this unbelieving world you will experience trouble and sorrows, but you must be courageous. I have conquered the world. Amen. The Prince of Peace, this fourth name of Jesus that we are looking at today. The Prince of Peace who gives us peace through his life, through his death, through his resurrection. And uh, we, we celebrate in Advent, look forward to celebrating the first Advent. As we have said a number of times, we look forward to that second Advent together. It's been a really significant year um, for many of us in our fellowship and for many of you. And uh, perhaps more so for Kat and for, for Brad, um, as we have missed out on... Kat going through her, her pregnancy but we've, it's been great just to, to share and to see Meredith on the few glimpses and the, the times when we've, we've spoken with them. And Kat is going to both give her testimony about some of her experience and how God has used her this week and then she's going to sing to us this morning. And so let's listen to Kat just now. And then after that, we're going to sing together, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. Thank you. For so many, 2020 has been the most challenging and probably the worst year of many people's lives. It's been a year of struggle and of loss, and everyone is waiting for things to go back to normal. Back in March, on Mother's Day, I announced my pregnancy. And then the next day, the whole country went into lockdown. I felt a mixture of emotions. I was excited about being a mum, having this new baby that I'd longed for for such a long time. And then the guilt, the panic set in. And not the usual mum panic, not the usual, will I be a good mum? Will things be okay? Will my labour be all right? No, the what kind of world am I bringing my baby into panic? The pandemic panic. I'm working for the NHS at the height of a pandemic. Was very a very anxious time. And with a lack of PPE, the mum guilt set in very, very quickly. I questioned why God had given me the best possible gift, but then locked it away, making me unable to share and celebrate with all my family and friends. My commute to work is about 30 to 40 minutes. And often I use my journey to gather my thoughts and to pray. I remember once after a particularly stressful shift of praying, praying for peace, praying for calm. And then shortly after, 
He's always been faithful, came blaring through my car speakers. Sometimes, before God answers a certain prayer, or before he has a greater opportunity for us, he has to mould our character. He has to build experience for us and in us. He has to prepare us for things that might happen down the line. Moses walked, worked as a shepherd for 40 years. And why was he a shepherd for so long? He was a shepherd for so long because God was preparing him for a greater task. God was preparing him to one day lead his people to the promised land. Moses was faithful and God increased his talents. On the 9th of September, I gave birth to my lockdown baby, Meredith. Having a baby during a pandemic has its challenges. And it's very frustrating not being able to go out and see the people that you rely on for support and for strength. However, this pandemic has taught me many things. It's taught me to be still and to appreciate everything that God gives us. And I know that once this is all back to normal, I'll appreciate the little things more, like going for a couple of a friend or a hug with my parents. And I know that you all will too. So, hang in there because we have a faithful God and we will get through this together.
He's always been faithful to me.
thank you very much, Band, for your message this morning. Who is he in yonder store? And as we go through with those words that are associated to that tune, uh, the whole story of Jesus, we can just only sing after, can't we? Tis the Lord, the King of glory, because that's what he has done for each one of us. So thank you very much for reminding us of that. Peace. This is something that we've spoken of in recent months, um, a couple of times anyway. Our passage from Isaiah 9 says, The one to come will be wonderful counsellor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This is who Jesus came to be. So it makes sense then that it is in him that we can have peace. Peace is sought after in our world um, today, throughout our world. Yet it seems to be also the most elusive treasure as well, where many people are concerned. They almost want peace, but on their terms only. And it doesn't matter how other people feel. But that's not peace. The great cry of the world is for peace. Or so we keep being told. Leaders aim for it, countries fight for it, which always seems a bit strange, but people seek it, yet it is simply found in Jesus. A French historian estimated that there has been 3,130 years of war in contrast to 227 years of peace from the 15th century before Christ to his own day. The world has seen 13 years of war for every year of peace. What a statistic that is. You would have thought, bearing that stat statistic in mind, that we would have learned from our mistakes and the world perhaps started to look for peace in a different way. Because something is obviously not working. But bearing again that statistic in mind, it seems quite ironic that Jesus was born at a relative time of peace, not only in the Roman Empire, but in all the world. What was God trying to tell us? My thinking would be that perhaps he was trying to say, if you want to continue with this peace, then look to the one who has just been born. He has come for a purpose. He has come to bring you this peace, but actually not as the peace as the world was seeing it because it was perhaps a tentative peace. This peace that Jesus brings is a real peace. In this day and age, it's not only the world and countries fighting, it is people fighting within themselves as well. We live in a time when people do not seem to be able to find their own peace their inner solace, if you like. They look to all sorts of things to gain that inner peace, whether that be tablets, drugs, alcohol or such like things. But the problem or the heart of the problem is the problem of the heart. Peace is not so much an external climate as it is an inward experience. It gives inner equilibrium when all around is bedlam. As Jesus has come into the world as Prince of Peace, he imparts his peace in three different ways of relationship. Firstly, he enables us to have peace with God. Jesus, by his death and resurrection, allowed us to be reconciled with God. Throughout the Old Testament, we know that priests had to offer sacrifices on behalf of the people for their sin, because sin had estranged them in their relationship with God. Jesus came as the one and only sacrifice for our sin. The cross on Calvary was a great bridge across the sea of sin. It led the way for us to be brought back to God. Secondly, Jesus enables us to have peace within ourselves in this world, as we have said, that relies so much or so heavily on other things. Jesus can resolve the inner conflicts and tension that would rob us 
of our peace. By the work of his Holy Spirit, he can calm and restore us again. When we are at peace with God and within ourselves, we come to the third relationship, and that is with others. There is that old saying, when the vertical relationship, and I think I've used it as well, when the vertical relationship is right, then the horizontal relationship is correct. And the horizontal relationship takes on its proper perspective. When we can learn and put into practice all that God has for us, we can know peace in our relationships. Matthew Henry says, as a king, he preserves the peace. He commands peace. No, more than that, he creates peace in his kingdom. He is our peace and it is his peace that both keeps the hearts of his people and rules in them. He is not only a peaceable prince and his reign peaceable, but he is author and giver of all good. All that peace which is present and future bliss of us, his people. So this Christmas, this Advent season, let's recognise Jesus for who he is. Wonderful counsellor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. As Matthew Henry has just said, or I've said through Matthew Henry, he is all those things. He is the author of all peace. He is all we need. In this world where many things are happening, many things that we don't understand. In this country where incredible things have happened this year. We have in Jesus all that we need. He alone can give us peace, peace with God, peace within ourselves and peace with others. Let's rely totally on him and claim his peace for our lives today. And this, if as a world we recognise this, we recognise that peace comes through Jesus, then what a better world it will be. Let's strive for the peace, for this world, for our country, but let's recognise that it's got to be through us. It's up to us as individuals to have the peace that Jesus brings. Let's share in prayer together. Loving Heavenly Father, we just thank you because in you we have all we need. In you we can find peace with God, within ourselves and with others. Because Jesus, you are the author of our peace. You are the Prince of Peace. Lord, as we think this morning upon that, help us to strive in our relationship with you so that we can have peace beyond measure. Lord, we make this prayer in and through your precious name. Amen. Who could imagine a king? This wonderful counsellor, this mighty God, this everlasting father, this prince of peace. Who would imagine a king? Let's listen as the group sing to us just now.
For bringing that song to us a great way to help us as we contemplate as we reflect upon our relationship with Jesus and the relationship that brings us that peace that inner solace that we need so thank you for who can imagine a king and in closing of our worship we're going to sing a great carol together joy to the world the Lord is come sing together. together shall we father god we thank you for your presence with us we thank you that you are the wonderful counselor the mighty god the everlasting father the prince of peace and as we have looked at those names those characteristics of of jesus this advent season we pray that your presence your peace your love your blessing will rest upon us each one through these days and forevermore. Amen. Amen. We just pray that you will have a, a really good week and as we celebrate together that the joy of Christmas will fill each one of us. Have a great week and as we go the fanfare are going to play for us the, the Christmas march 
the shining star. God bless you all. Thank you.